We have literally just uh, agreed at G7 finance ministers meeting, which is a really quite a significant moment. Uh, our political backing as the G7 for an oil price cap on Russian oil, which will do two things. One, it will prevent Putin from profiteering from the very high oil prices. And equally importantly, it will mean that we will be able to collectively, and we can bring other countries uh, as well, that's what we've just agreed amongst the G7 finance ministers, protect our citizens from oil price shocks next year. Uh, that is a significant step forward. We now have to, of course, make sure we implement it. Uh, and the strategy is to implement the oil price cap in December and then oil price uh, product cap in February. It will mean that Putin can't profiteer uh, from excessively high oil prices and, of course, protect all of us uh, from oil price shocks next year and beyond. OK, let's speak to our business correspondent, Paul Kelso. So, Paul, what exactly is this cap and how is it going to work? Well, this news has just emerged and picking through the communique that's been provided by the G7, it's not quite as simple, perhaps, as the Chancellor made that sound. A price cap on Russian oil makes it sound like there is a, a price above which uh, countries will not trade. It's not quite that. It is more accurately appears to be a prohibition on those who enable uh, the service, the trade in oil, shipping of oil, particularly maritime trade in oil. So uh, shipping and uh, transport companies, insurance companies, oil, when it's moved, has a huge amount of value. So there's insurance required, trading, the financing, the architecture of the oil industry. It's preventing any of those services being provided for Russian oil shipments above a certain price cap. So there'll be a number produced by the G7 in due course. It's not here yet. And you won't be able to trade effectively in Russian oil exports above that number. Now, the intention, as Nadim Zahawi says out there, is to try and reduce the revenue that Russia is getting from its fossil fuel exports. Um, all the, most of the, certainly the European Union, the UK, many G7 countries have already committed to reducing their reliance and their use of Russian fossil fuels. But the irony of the current situation in which the reduced supply of Russian fuels has pushed up global energy prices, as we know very dearly in the UK, the gas price particularly, has shot up. Net effect of that is that while Russia is exporting and finding fewer customers, uh, fewer volumes certainly of its oil and gas, it is making greater revenues than it was before because the price of oil and gas has got higher. And there's an interesting balance here that's going on. While the EU, for the first time, EU oil in, uh, fossil fuel imports from uh, Russia are less than 50 percent for the first time in July. They drop below that figure. They still make up around two thirds of the fossil fuel imports used by EU, G7 and NATO countries. So Russian fossil fuel is still vitally important. And while the West, the G7, NATO are reducing their imports, China and India particularly are increasing their imports of Russia, Russian oil and gas. So while Russia is uh, finding the West closed off, it has got new customers and now makes up nearly 25 percent of China's oil and gas imports. And particularly when you think of the size of the Chinese economy, that is fueling uh, the Russian war machine in Ukraine, even if the West is trying hard not to.